you know, why did I become a geologist? I used to run around the rocks and my geography teacher, as many of us know, we would be inspired by a teacher. And I thought, well, goodness gracious, can this clambering around rocks actually be a real job? <laughs> and I found out it was, and I went to Trinity, the university in Dublin. And uh, luckily enough, Trinity isn't an exacting science, because I'd been at an all-girls school, and the biggest science was domestic science, <laughs> which is cooking. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a funny story to, to get me here, because now I'm a petroleum geologist, and that sounds like a scientist. But it's actually more about the art and the love and the passion of your, of your, of your life that you want to connect with. And so I don't even think un going to university is particularly necessary, unless you know that's part of your passion. Um, then I, I was hired by an American company, straight out of college, and brought to the United States. And I'd heard about you Americans, <laughs> <laughs> that you were all entrepreneurs. And it was the backbone of America, this entrepreneurial spirit. So I thought I'd better get on with it. And I set up S. Morrison Associates very, very quickly. Um, mainly because I, I really did believe and could feel 35 years ago a huge pioneering spirit here in America. To tell you the truth, I don't quite feel it the same way today. And we'll touch on that later. Um, I then got a phone call. And uh, it was a very proper English man. And he said, hello, Susan. Is there any oil down here? I said, well, Ian, where are you? And he said, oh, my God, I think I'm in, in British Honduras, but I think they've just changed their name. And it was 1981, and they had just gained independence, and they changed their name to Belize. And I don't know if any of you are in the oil business here, but there's a fantastic library out here. And so I nipped up to the library, we young geologists, and I, I don't really like computers, still don't, by the way. So I got one of those human librarians, I don't know if they're still around, human librarians. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, I told her what, what I wanted. And she said, you know, I've got this report that they've been working on for about 15 years, but it hasn't been published yet. And she said, it's all in handwritten notes with sketches. And I said, that sounds great. So I got it. And I said to myself, if you go back 100 million years, and that's where geologists have a bit of an advantage, um, <laughs> you know, we could, we're time travelers, uh, uh, you could see that those oil molecules didn't know there was a border between Mexico and Belize. <laughs> and so actually, Belize is the Mexican basin. So I thought, you know, they've got plenty. But it's not going to stop at the border. So I jumped on a plane and went down and joined Sir Ian Rankin. And when I got off the plane, and this was a key, key moment, I fell madly in love with the people and the place, Belize. The brown eyes, the trust, the connection with, with life, with everything, with each other, with the jungle, with the sky, with their heritage, uh, with their just open happiness. And I adored the place. And that motivation, that purpose, unbeknownst to me then, was part of, I think, a critical stirring. One of those things that maybe many of us as students felt, I really want to be part of changing the world, making a difference. But it's that type of stirring. Uh, anyway. Ian and I uh, explored and uh, for a couple of years, and I was back in Denver, where I live. I live about 10 minutes away from here, actually. Um, and someone said, you must meet this Belizean, Mike Usher. And we met. And we both had a desire to make a difference. He wanted to get home to his country, Belize, and I felt his country was the best thing since sliced bread, that's another Irish expression, the absolute best country. And uh, we decided there and then that we would find a way to find a way. And not just in the, let's say, the ordinary way, get in, get out, get the money and run, 
but to really make a difference for the people in a way that nobody had ever seen before. We tried uh, in many, many different ways. We even drilled the deepest well offshore Central America with big major oil companies, Demonex, which is the German national oil company, Petrofina is the Belgian national oil company. And today, thank God it was a dry hole because they didn't love Belize. They were wanting to get in and out and get the money. Um, now, meanwhile, I would come back to Denver and um, started, a, 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 I say, an idea. <coughs> I'd been to a number of countries all around the world, and I'd noticed opportunities. And I came back to the United States, and it was on one of those downturns, where the price of oil had plummeted, and everybody was out of work. Geologists were bartenders. Um, I'm sure many of us remember that time. It was, a, it was a recession, basically. And I thought, goodness gracious, how can I get the world together so that there's a mixing and matching of these opportunities. And as life would have it, um, the president of the American Association of, of Petroleum Geologists, and this is 20 years ago to this month. They're celebrating this month back in Denver, the big AAPG convention. It's at the end of the month. But they asked me if I would be head of international. And I said, well, what does it do? And they said, well, we've never had one before. You make it up. <laughs> and uh, I said, wow, that's a good chance for me to have, to have a go at this idea. And so we got together a hundred volunteers and I painted the vision of the energy world coming to Denver in a CASBA format where each country had their, their booth, their minister was there, their geologists, their lawyers, their maps. I even suggested they bring some of their cool products like coffee from the Congo or chocolate from New Guinea uh, because I wanted it to be, to be different, you know, not just about maps. I wanted to really uh, let them express themselves. But it had never been done before. And I didn't realize in the background of the AAPG there was some negativity going on. But luckily enough, <laughs> we were 100 strong and we were barreling ahead. And this thing happened 20 years ago. Um, 52 countries came. They're ministers of energy. And it has been replicated for the last 20 years throughout the world. And billions of barrels of oil have been found from taking action on one idea. And I was given a lovely uh, award for being a global visionary. But that's not the point. What happened after that was a key turning point in my life. A professor came up to me and said, Susan, would you come and teach what you did? You know, you had an idea and you, you did it. And I looked at the professor and I said, don't be daft. You just roll up your sleeves and do it. <laughs> and he looked at me as if I had snakes coming out of my head. <laughs> so I realized then that not everybody comes to the table with the same understanding. And although I knew and loved the rocks and the earth, I knew nothing about how humans worked. So the scientist and businesswoman in me decided this is a major gap in my life. I am going to find out the answer.